Greetings viewers. This is my power feed for the cross slide that I made and basically I'm doing a gear cutting operation and for that I'm running it at 43% as it feeds the gear blank into the cutter. Uh, basically I've got a couple of marks on the carriage, one there and one there, and I've got uh, one mark on the cross slide, just a magic marker, so they can be easily removed, and uh, basically this is where I want the carriage to be stopped when it comes back. So I can advance the uh, indexing gear. And this is the furthest I want it to go in. Because as it reaches that point, there's not a lot of room between the uh, milling attachment and the cutter. Which makes it a little tricky. But we get by. Uh, one of the... I made the uh, version, what I call the version 2 attachment after I watched Mr. Pete222's videos on making the proper one for the 10 inch and 12 inch Atlas lathes. Uh, this is a scaled down version. Instead of using a 3 quarter inch shaft, I used a 5 8 shaft. Instead of using inch and a half body, I used an inch piece of round stock and then welded it to a piece of quarter inch angle iron face the angle iron so it's square and uh, basically I'm using a knurled knob to lock the shaft on the side now instead of coming down from the top and I've got another knurled knob so that I can move the indexing dog up and down the advantage of the knurled knobs is that I don't need to use a T-wrench and that I can actually uh, make sure I don't over tighten things which you might be tempted to do with the T-wrench for the socket headed screws so basically as you can see I'm slowly getting there I'm cutting a 56 tooth gear so it takes a while but uh, eventually we'll get there. Anyhow, just thought I'd show you that. Okay, so we've got the lathe running, and here I'm turning the uh, power feed for the cross slide into the forward motion so it will advance in. And as you can see, it's slowly working into the gear cutter with the blank. There it's starting to engage. A little bit of chatter right at the first where it starts to engage. Uh, I found this is pretty much normal regardless of how slow I make the uh, cross slide move in. Once the uh, cutter gets fully engaged with the gear blank, it quiets down quite a bit as you can notice possibly. And we're slowly feeding in. starting to come through this side now with the cutter and as you can see by the marks we've got a bit more to do to make sure it fully passes through here's the marks down here And 
got about another eighth of an inch to go on the marks. And basically we're right about where I want to stop it, so I just turn the uh, controller off, crank it up to 100%, and then I put it in reverse and bring the cross slide back out. Cutter comes through quite nicely. And then what I'll do once I get the cross slide out is I'll loosen this knob and that leads, lets the shaft rotate freely and then I can undo this one, slide this up, move the uh, gear one tooth over, drop it back down and lock everything in place again by tightening up the two knobs and that will let us do another pass anyhow just thought i'd show you that uh, this basically moves the uh, cross slide or the uh, cutter This basically moves the cutter uh, shaft location in before it used to be out about here when I was cutting a gear, which made it quite far away from the center of the uh, uh, cross slide. A lot of overhang floating out in free space, so to speak. So with this move in, it helps quite a bit with the rigidity. Uh, the only problem is I can only cut up to a 56 tooth gear here because I run out of uh, vertical travel. Um, but what I'm hoping to do is make some sort of a step up plate either for here or the base so I can get about an extra 3 eighths to half inch of travel which is what I would need to cut a 64 tooth gear. But that's going to come eventually, hopefully. And this is an example of a bag gear being cut. <laughs> Basically, I oopsed and as a result, I got a very wide tooth, which is no good. So, I stopped cutting once I realized that that had happened. Basically, what I had done was I had made up a new arbor that would extend all the way to go with the uh, tailstock and run on the live center. Good idea, and it was working good until I decided not to leave well enough alone. I noticed that this end had a little bit of wobble, as if there was a piece of dirt in the end of it. So I stopped the lathe, cleaned it out, and basically put the uh, tailstock back in. But what happened is, as I was tightening the wheel on the tailstock, it pushed the arbor this way and as a result the cutter moved in towards the headstock making for a very wide tooth not good so basically I'm back to using the other uh, arbor as you can see so I'm not tempted to do that and it seems to still be working out good rigidity is about the same so We'll keep going. Hopefully we'll get a good gear out of this. So here we've just completed the last pass on the 56 tooth gear. So I'm going to unlock the spindle and also slide up the indexing dog. So now I can turn have a look see all the teeth are looking good from what I'm seeing and basically I'll just 
just have to uh, clean it up and we'll have a look-see at it. Okay, so here's the uh, newly cut gear. So you never get the camera to focus. Doesn't really want to focus real well, but anyhow, cleaned it up. Teeth look good. And I'm basically happy with it. I don't know where you can see or not, but if you look right at the bottom of the teeth in the valley, you can see it's nice and flat, no ridges. Here's a 64 tooth gear that I cut with the old gear cutter. And I'm not sure if you can see, but there are ridges where basically the feed was uneven or something was bouncing a little bit and it wasn't giving a full nice cut. Anyhow, just thought I'd show you that. Thanks. And here we're just comparing the original 56 tooth gear that we indexed with to the newly made one. And basically, everything looks like a good fit as far as teeth engagement, so it should play well with others. This mode will show it any better. Valleys. Maybe if I take a flashlight. Nah, I don't think it's showing up very well. But anyhow, just cheap camera. That's his life.